Hi, welcome to the session. This episode, we're going to be looking at the Walking Dead theme and how to recreate that using Logic Pro. The interesting thing about the Walking Dead theme is that it's got an ostinato pattern that's repeating throughout the entire song. And the thing that makes it interesting are the textures that are there. So let's have a look. So here's our project for Walking Dead and um, here's how it sounds. So the first thing is immediately apparent is that the full strings tremolo is carrying the whole melody. So basically that melody is the thing that's carrying the, um, the entire track. And um, so here's how I found out which one to use. I actually went to orchestral strings and then we have a full strings tremolo. But I didn't want the full strings sound so I actually EQ'd out the bottom end. I took out 24 deeps from uh, 270 hertz, just a low shelf basically, give it that thinner sound. And also I gave it a generous reverb in terms of a space designer and I sent it out to a really large space, 6.1 seconds Ancient Church Plus, one of my favorites, and a generous amount of reverb. So yeah, you can hear that. So basically I just played it and copied it across and I quantized those to 1 over 16th. Pretty straightforward. And um, just how it sounds is just this. Pretty straightforward stuff. But um, you can see that there's a lot of automation going on in this track because it's fairly repetitive so you need the dynamics to go up and down. And basically I automated it upwards until the big section it goes sideways and right till the end it goes down again. Now for the second part of it, uh, it's a full string staccato under orchestral strings, full string staccato. Same bus, sending it to the same thing, some automation, and um, it's just doing the root notes like that kind of stuff. So you can see over here. And um, it's got some automation going on for it as well, going up very similar to the full strings tremolo. So they're actually just going together as a pair, so like that. Um, and that's it for the first section of the song, it's just these two parts. After that, a tremolo starts coming in on the cello. So it's actually pairing with the main uh, sort of violin, viola melody. So it's like that. And it's still pretty repetitive. Um, there are some little bits of automation as well. Um, you can find the cello tremolo under orchestral strings, cello tremolo. And that's kind of it. It's sort of, it's a bit boring, repetitive at this point. But from now on, you start adding textures and that's where it gets interesting. Um, you see that you get an EXS strings, which I kind of like. It's under factory pop strings, EXS strings 2. It's got this texture about it, just to add a pad. And when it changes over, And that's basically just uh, pitch bends that's happening on this side. You can see the pitch bends just going down here. So pretty straightforward stuff as well, but it's starting to add a bit of texture into it. And now there's some beats and 
as usual, I find that trailer FX under textures, FX, trailer FX, and this time it's trailer FX2. Some really nice big booms for the points where it hits. And here. Just those deep booms and paired with toms that you can find in the studio kit, which is under drums and percussion, acoustic drum kits, studio kit, uh, studio toolkit. And I find Studio Toolkit really useful as well. Lots of snares, lots of toms. And in this case, we use the toms. And another one here. And we put them together. They kind of give this nice little big drum. Kind of booming sound. And uh, you got little stuff from the Studio Toolkit here as well. Just little toms. Just on the build-up sections the heavier sections, and we send them generously to the reverb as well. Now more textures, and these are from textures, pads, and this is a billow pad, just sits underneath everything. And you can see the automation, pretty big gap. And that's it. But you've put together with the strings, it's a nice texture, ominous texture. You can hear everything growing crescendo, this slow crescendo towards something. And right at the end, we add all these other textures. Um, you can have, see them under textures, drones, and this one is temptation, and it's got this nice little dark sound. Of course, also with uh, automation and this one as well, the next one, which is a plasma conduit, just to give it that texture right before it goes into the big, deep, dark section. And note that there's an ambient effects here as well. It's also under textures, this time under cinematic textures, ambient effects one. And here's how it sounds. It's just all these really like dark textures and um, just to have a feeling for it, I'm just going to put them together and here's how it sounds with all the textures and percussion in and uh, like that. So it's all about creating that kind of very ghostly vibe um, I use trailer FX1 here in the second section where the strings sort of change key. So it goes from this, the opening. Shifts again. So this is sort of like the bridge or the chorus. It depends on how you look at it. But that's definitely the biggest part in the song. And this part, I added a uh, subsonic bass from the ESM. It's a very simple synth that you can find as a preset just to give it that low end. And it's also paired with a legato bass that you can find in a, under orchestral strings basses legato. And this is how the bass sounds. Very ominous, and you pair them together. And uh, of course, this the base of this has a fairly healthy amount of reverb as well. And now more hits from Trailer FX1, because I found that Trailer FX2 didn't have the kind of hits that I wanted, and here's how they sound. 
big bright heads. And uh, in the same section, there's also a church choir and you can find that under orchestral choir, church choir. It's got a bit of that Gregorian chant feel about it, which is perfect for this. And uh, lots and lots of reverb to that um, ancient church. <laughs> so perfect for it. Let's see how it sounds. So just sitting in the background here, if you put it together with the strings and everything. So you can detect it, but it's not mixed so uh, front of the mix. It's sort of sitting in the back with lots of reverb. Now, um, something interesting is that I wanted to find a reverse crash and I found it really difficult to find a reverse crash. So what I did was I looked into the loops for a crash, crash symbol. And I found uh, under crash symbol four. So I just basically copied it over, I dragged it over into here. Oops, sorry. Yeah, just dragged it into here. And uh, what I did was I converted the loop um, under file, I think it's here save a copy as yes. and I converted it into from a CAF into an AIF because what you need to do is to reverse the file and basically you can see here I right? just cut that section up here and I go under functions you can go reverse and basically that's what I did with the file not on the track on the file so on the functions you go reverse and with a bit of reverb. So what you get is sort of this, this buildup. Yep, like that. So I built my own reverse symbol. I don't know why the view is not showing, but basically you get to see a little buildup right until the end with a reverb. And uh, it sounds like this. Which I find extremely useful because uh, it's not something that sits really forward for reverse crashes, but it gives a really nice build-up and I tend to like to use reverse crashes. Um, and for the third section, it goes back to the original chords. But this time it's sort of like going downwards, sort of getting quieter to the finale, to, uh, to the final chord. And um, there is a, a little beat that Something interesting you might not know about is that you can find beats within alchemy under rhythmic drums. I picked bus bar and it sounds like this. Just nice little electronic thing that sort of sits underneath everything. So it goes like that. So it's got this nice little rhythm going about it. And uh, under the orchestral kit, I just had this few hits over here. And as with hits that come together, you always want to, even though you quantize it, you always want to add a bit of phlegm. And in this case, I put about 10 ticks so that, you know, you get a bit of that real uh, organic feeling about it. And, um, you can see that this ambient effects here and you can see that the ambient effects here has a pitch band going for it over here so right till the end it's sort of like pitching upwards to give it that more sinister feel uh, it's a pad uh, let's just hear how the effects grows as it goes along. Right till the end. So it's really sinister. And uh, for the final chord, uh, we use a Steinway grand piano. And the 
acoustic pianos, Steinway Grand Piano 2. And it's just this octave that's been played here. So just like that. Lots of reverb as well. And um, we just sort of ended it tail so that it doesn't sort of go on for too long. Same thing with the strings as well. When you end them, So you want it sort of like uh, decrescendo into the end of it. So it's all about textures. Um, let's just listen to the textures again because I really like um, sort of pointing them out together maybe with the bass. So it sounds a bit like a horror movie. <laughs> and this part is just repeating patterns. I hope you learned something useful today, like how textures can really change the character of a song. If you want to download the Logic Project, it's in the link below. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more. See ya.